Hey everybody! Hey, thank you, Pedro and um, and Rosa, for your wonderful, wonderful, dedicated work that you do with us. Really, really, could never say enough how much I appreciate. We all appreciate the work you've been doing with us for the last few years. It's been amazing. And uh, just in case, I think you. I'm not sure if you showed the drawing of the costume that you're actually working on. Uh, to everybody, but just to remind you, so the headdress at the top, um, if you scroll down, there's some images of that that I've been working on um, for this whole past week, and then um, uh, I put out a call, well, I've got a call, but one of our wonderful volunteers named Anastasia and her friend Brandon were really busy in the beginning um, working on um, the, the original engineering for the headdress. You know, really figuring out the size and how they would be spaced. And they started cutting and forming um, the, uh, the pieces which were printed onto fabric uh, for the sustainable goals. And um, they really wanted to finish it. So when we knew that we were going to have to go remote and work off site, um, Anastasia contacted us and said, hey, is there any way I can help? So like with Pedro and Rosa, um, I got a ride from a friend who was, um, we all bundled up with our rubber gloves and our face masks and we drove out to Brighton Beach from the Bronx, where she, where Anastasia lives, and brought her uh, the headdress to finish. And um, Anastasia is, is a medical student, so she's been very busy, um, I guess, still working as a student at the hospital that she's stationed at, which I actually don't know. But um, apparently, she's going to be um, go staying with some family out of out of the city for a little while and says she'll work on the uh, headdress then to finish it. So I'm really excited about it. I look forward to seeing how she does with all the sewing. There was a lot of hand sewing involved with that. Um, and I did my first hat job with, with the buckram. And so uh, it's like, it's going to be a big sun hat. You can see pictures of it down, down the way. So what we are doing tonight is um, I think I was live streaming during the week where I've been making my paper. So I really want you guys to see that paper making process a bit more, okay? So there's my vat down here showing where I'm gonna take my, my frame, my, my mold. And my mold and my decal. The decal is the part without the screen. Oh, just an aside to you, Felicia. I made potato latkes tonight. <laughs> my friend Olivier really wanted to try the latkes because he's never been here for one of my latke parties. And so I am just rolling in the grease right now. And uh, we had a yummy time. So anyway, back to paper making. So... I just put in some fresh pulp and again this is all pulp that was made from recycled linen tablecloths that I had and the whole idea is that I'm you know repurposing them they had some stains in them and so this was a way to reuse them so I had my beater going for two weeks straight driving my my friend Olivier crazy, but uh, we've had that going. I think my upstairs neighbor finally stopped recording. I have a musician who lives upstairs with his own recording studio, and I'm currently living with a musician here, so I've been surrounded by guys recording. Anyway, so I had my machine to, uh, you know, drown out the music. So how we make paper is that you have your mold on the bottom with the screen and the decal on top, okay? 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip down into the vat and pull up my pulp. And then I'm just giving it a little bit of a swiggle in there to even out the fibers. And then I have these two pieces of wood. I'm going to put it, rest these on. So now what's happening is the water is draining out from underneath. You can see and here. It's raining in my apartment. Um, it takes, because I, uh, because I made this pulp for so many hours in the beater, it's really, it's, it has long strands, but it's also fine at the same time. And it's really, really, um, the fibers are really, uh, engorged with water. So with that being the case, um, it takes a while for the water to drain out from the fibers. And the whole idea with paper making is that um, when you're breaking down the pulp or breaking down even um, fabric to not just the threads, but even beyond the threads, you're actually breaking down the cellular wall structure of the um, of the fibers, and that breaks open these hairs, the minute, minute hairs on all the fibers, so that when you lay them down in the screen like this, they kind of just lay all on top of each other and in, 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 um, in random, and that's what makes the paper um, hold together, basically. So once I've got Olivier here, um, I'm going to show you how I started making, uh, working on the actual costume, which is back here behind me. She's been waiting, and you can see I started off with an experiment last night, but I want to show you how I'm transferring the pulp from the screen. So I've got most of the water coming off. Now, the the sheets that I'm making are really thin. And so for anyone who's done paper making before, I'm transferring them in a way that's not really traditional. I'm not pooching the paper, which is normally what you do. So I'm going to take my deckle off and that is much more and you see what's all what's holding the pulp to the screen is um is surface tension and if anyone knows with water there's there's a great amount of surface tension that's also helping to keep the fibers um in there uh, and all together without like slipping off okay so now so you can see me now. Um, I'm going to take this material, which is called Pellon, and I'm going to lay that Pellon on top and start pressing and pulling the water out. Okay. So let's see who's online. I think Catherine is there. Hey, Catherine, and hey, Pedro and Rosa. Okay, and then Lori is there. Lori Clammerwood, good friend. Hey, Lori, how are you? Thanks for joining. Um, Lori was a, an early um, volunteer back in 2010 that Lori started working with us, and she and I became good friends. And unfortunately, her work schedule has kept her from joining the Wednesday evening um, the Wednesday evening uh, workshops, but I'm glad she can join today and at least be with us virtually here. Okay, so I'm pulling out the water and as you can see, it's um, squeezing out of my sponge. Okay. 
and then what I'm going to do here is lift paper from the screen. So you can kind of see the paper here. Okay. And then I'm going to lay that down to get ready for going <clears throat> into the press. So, Olivier, yes. do you want to uh, film me from this side sure. so people can watch? So okay. we're just going to shift the location of the uh, computer. So people can watch from a different angle and maybe get some close-ups. Okay, so I'm going to swoop the pulp around. Then I'm going to take my mold and decal and go down and into the pulp and then up and again swooshing kind of back and forth to get the fibers spread evenly and then resting onto the wood okay so while that's getting done i'll show you where all the pulp is so let's get past here there so here was the uh, beater, Hollander beater, that you saw last week. Um, not sure if you saw all the grinders inside. Okay, so these have been spinning and spinning for days, <laughs> uh, grinding down the, the pulp inside to a second set of grinders. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and scoop out some of that pulp and bring it over to add to the vat. You don't want to have too much pulp in the vat right away because that this way, you know, how paper making works is that it's really by poundage of pulp and it's usually by dry weight. So I'm not very good at working out all of the logistics of exactly how much pulp I add each time, but I'm basically trying to get a thin sheet. So that's why I, um, I don't add so much at a time. So it's still pretty, it's still draining here. So let's take a look over here behind us and we'll go down. So I wanted to show you See if how the lighting is for that. You know what? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a little fashion show. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna put this piece on for everybody to see how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna turn around and put it from behind now. Okay. Space is tight, hopefully I'm not bumping into too many things. So, of course, where the arms are, there's not going to be any paper. But um, and just a reminder to show you the drawing that this is based on. Ooh, is this, this drawing. Okay. Now the headdress has changed a little bit. So, okay, so we'll stand in front now. So like this part here, let's go and focus down for me. There we go. Like this part here is gonna be all paper and then down here, but like a little part right there will be empty. And then let's see about the head. Okay. So 
I do. Back to you. Okay. So the goal for tonight is to um, start adhering the paper to the frame. Now I know, Felicia, this is going to be difficult to store afterwards. <laughs> I know my costume last year with the bamboo uh, was a little big. I hope it can fit into storage. Or we'll find a way. Um, I thought about this being in sections, but the whole process of piecing it back together and you know being able to remember how to piece it back together, I thought was just going to be too much. So um, we'll figure out a way. But let's see if we can just get a little detail on the paper that's been added. So here's the back side. we go and you can see how it's translucent the paper you can see my hand through there so that when it's worn in the sunlight coming through there we go I have this lessons that I really want the paper to have. Okay, and just listen to this. You know, the paper is actually really, really strong right now. And it's been treated also with methyl cellulose, which, you know, is what Lucrecia uses also on the masks. So I do put that on So I think our pulp is ready to finally be grained enough. Get my uh, back on. Okay. All right. So I noticed that there's a little bit of pulp in another. That out. Okay, so we're gonna there we go. take the um, deckle off. Okay, drain out any last minute water. And come over to the table. And I'm going to get a piece of pellon here and uh, lay that on top. Okay, can you get a little closer? And again, start to pull out the, the, uh, the water. I'll get a picture of my oyster fish costume. Oh yeah, definitely. The oyster toad fish is what you wore, Lori. <laughs> oyster toad fish, yes. The giant, giant uh, mouth, uh, head. Okay, so now what you're gonna, I'm gonna do is I'm picking up the pulp that's on the screen and peeling it off. Okay? So again, there's the sheet of paper there. All right. And I think I need to make, start another sheet, let that drain out. 
and then I'll take the uh, sheets that I made earlier today out of the press. So let's make one more sheet. Now again, this would have been a great job and would have gone much faster if I'd had a couple of volunteers helping me with this. I think it it's a technique that I think a lot of people would have liked to have learned, but we got what we got, right? Okay, so let's let that one drain, and so we're going to turn this around. I'm going to go to the, um, you guys didn't get to see this last time because I think I did it too fast, and Olivia didn't catch it on the uh, filming. So this is uh, my press that came with the beater made by this same guy in New Zealand. And I'm going, this is a regular card jack that I'm using for the pressure. I'm going to unlock the pressure now. <laughs> Isn't that a great sound? Olivier said he wanted to record that sound. So, um, now I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the papers that were in the press and go back to the table here. Okay. And take off. Not, uh, I'm going to transfer the pulp, the paper from the from the um, pelon to the costume, but not quite yet. I'm going to have my materials ready. Ooh. Okay, so I've got a whole big batch of methocellulose mixed here. And I'm just using a smaller container of it. And to get my piece ready, okay, so this is where I want to be on the rug. So I'm just going to prep the caning right now. So you want to figure out a place for that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this section here. There we go. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to prep this area first and douse it in um, the methyl cellulose for gluing the pulp to it. And then I also need to put some on the existing paper so that they'll uh, connect. And if I screw up, that's not so bad. I can always recycle the pulp and put it back in the vat and rehydrate the paper. And it's good to go on a second try if it doesn't work well on the first. All right, so now I'm going to take the sheet and I'm going to place it basically where I want to start, which is overlapping the previous sheet. I'm going to start peeling it off. And 
then as I peel it off, gluing the paper down. That's fine. That's good. That's good. Okay. Eagle has it. Even though the paper's wet, I can still kind of cut it. So I'll cut off this section here. Yeah, the paper's not dry, mind you. It's wet. It's damp still. So I can take the glue. I'm going to cover over this section here. I also have some of the methyl cellulose mixed into the paper itself to keep it stronger as well. My computer is really hot. Does it feel hot to the touch? Okay. Okay. But my computer is not very happy at the moment. Saying, leave me alone, I'm tired. Okay, so let's trim off this other side. I'm gonna lift up a little bit. Yeah, good. So we're gonna trim off this other side. And let's see if we can piece this section down. Oh, I gotta finish up down on this side too. Okay. So let's um, 
Before we add on our next piece, let's finally make the pulp over here. Okay. All right, so again, our last sheet for this batch is I'm going to bring up the uh, deckle. There's still water coming out. And yeah, let me put it up there. Oh, sorry. Okay, and so let's see. Previous sheet. So I'm going to lay the pellon on top, and again pull out the uh, water. So um, I poked in over a little bit when Lucrecia was doing her uh, live stream, and saying a little bit about you know background and where we come from as artists. Uh, you know, I'm not a, um, I'm not a traditionally classically trained painting artist or sculpture. My background was actually in weaving. So I learned how to weave and pattern draft and to print on textile. So my whole background is working in textiles and that fiber history. My program at graduate school was actually called um, Fiber and Material Studies. And that's why I really use a lot of natural materials in my work comes from that background, but also certainly the environmental interest and how I'm really trying in my own practice to practice a, keep up a sustainable practice. So all of my materials feed into one another. So, because everything exists, nothing disappears. Nothing, uh, even though things might disintegrate, they become something else after disintegration, uh, become a part of the soil again, just like for composting. And that composting then is where we plant our food, and then that food, get those nutrients get ingested into the plants, and then we eat those plants. So again, what was disintegrated becomes a part of our bodies again. And this is a whole, whole, whole cyclical process. And so, of course, if we're going to put toxic things into the ground and into our air, toxic things are going to go back into us then and the rest of nature and then that creates all the havoc that we have <sighs> so in my own studio trying to to keep up that practice so i've been working a lot with collecting um the detritus from the seasons collecting uh mater natural materials that i can reprocess these days into the paper especially okay Go. There's our sheet on there. I'm going to put that to my little pile. Put another pellon on top or two. Then I'm going to get this felt at the bottom and put that on top. And then we're going to go to the press and sandwich them. Okay. So, 
There's our felt and the sheets. In there, we'll get the puff and bring that down. Oops. Okay, what does that say? This. We have to tighten that. Okay. Now, I'm not using that much water, but normally a lot of water would squeeze out, but since I'm not using that much, and I'm pressing it out with a sponge ahead of time, there's just a little bit of water that comes out. But the main reason for pressing is to take all those fibers that are, you know, laying in, in um, random ways and... Ah, press them you know, stronger together. So uh, while that is pressing, we are going to just take a look at oh, the next costume I'm going to try and work on here. And that's for um, carbon sequestration. Okay, so um, I know that Felicia had tr done some uh, exam some samples with kombu seaweed to make as a headdress, so I'm curious to see how that came out. Uh, hopefully we'll get some photos of that from sitting at 6th Street. Um, but here, what I'm planning on doing right now, this is just a, um, uh, a muslin top but I also have our raw silk which um, I know that Rosa will remember me using last time when I was here. This is the raw um, silk that I'm going to use instead and what I'm going to do is create kind of like a spangly kind of top but sewing this uh, green raffia to green ribbon and it's going to be uh, all along the ribbon hanging down is going to be the top so that's the part that you see here and then what I need to do once um, zero waste is finished want to try and go down and bring this to 6th Street so it's not taking as much room up in the studio anymore and I can bring up um, burlap which I need for the other parts which is going to be recreating the mango no not the mango the mangrove roots going down and then um, Back in the bucket here, I'm not going to open it now, I have a whole bunch of blue ribbon that I'm going to swirl around and make a hoop skirt for the, the bottom of this piece. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that, that uh, is going to be happening soon. Okay, so where are we? 739. All right. So let's add another sheet to the mix here. Um, let's see which sheet we need.
But thank goodness, knock on wood, we're very healthy here. I don't want to do something really weird. How about this? Um, I'm going to do something really I'm 
So the tricky part is making sure that the paper comes in contact with the, the framing. You know what, I think I'm gonna Take this part off. And redo that section. So it's a little cleaner. like it's like the skin of an egg roll <sighs> does that have you really holding your breath it's mine <laughs> all right let's try and get this baby connected Okay, the thing I have to learn to say is to stop when it's, uh, so I don't fuss with it too much. All right, so it's 7.52. Um, yeah, we can put the computer down. Thank you, Olivier. All right, everybody. So um, thank you again for tuning in. It's getting close to 8 o'clock, and long day and I still have wet paper so I still got to do a little bit more on this um, by next week it should be done I thought I'd be done tonight but I was trying to do too many things so today was again it's still samples and I do have to just continue working on my own a lot so um, Pedro if you really do want to come up let me know um, It'd be great to have you help out uh, if you're able to. I, um, not too far away. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing how the rest of the headdress for the Sustainable Development Bowls goes. And um, 
Oh, I'm tired. Sorry. <laughs> so I think I'm actually going to sign off a little early tonight. Um, you guys, again, we just are sorry that things aren't continuing as we wanted to. But we're trying to keep you all involved. This is, again, it's a very big community-based project. Um, and I think myself and other artists and educators are really working on ways to keep people active and online. And the thing I'm hearing a lot is that, you know, even though we might be stuck at home, we're not feeling bored. That's for sure. We're keeping very busy. And um, if you want to, um, yeah, so we're just keeping busy because uh, we're trying to strategize how we can teach this online, you know, within the schools and they have Google Classroom and then figuring out how to use Zoom and all that. Um, you know, if we didn't have the internet, um, we would be on the phone a lot, but Keeping in a visual context is really amazing right now. Just uh, don't want to lose our high-speed internet. I know that's going to be maybe part of our next package of support from the, from the House and Senate um, that they're putting out. So I hope you don't mind if I log out just five minutes early. Um, yeah, it's good to see you all. And you as they say on the other side. Okay, good night.